So this is going to be page one of the networks lecture topic and specifically uh, computer networks. And we are going to start by talking about network layers. So networks are divided into protocol layers uh, because they provide structure to the network and they also provide modularity. So conceptually they're broken down and um, you can manage each part sort of independent of the rest and also you can swap parts out so you get the modularity. Uh, in general for this topic we are looking at section 12.2 of the uh, textbook. It doesn't go into uh, a lot of detail, but it covers a few of the things that we'll talk about. I'm going to show you two um, network uh, protocol stacks. And so the first one is a five layer protocol, and it's the, um, it's the internet uh, protocol stack. So it's got the application layer, the transport layer, the network layer, the link layer, and the physical layer. So we can put boxes around all that. So it's a five layer protocol stack. So this is the five layer internet protocol stack. Uh, some of the layers run on the computer uh, in software, others actually run on your network interface card uh, in hardware. So that's one. Uh, the other common network protocol stack is called the OSI model. So we've got the application layer, presentation layer, session layer, and then it looks the same. So the transport layer, network layer, link layer, and physical layer. So this is the seven later <coughs> OSI, I'll call it protocol stack, it's also called the reference model. OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnect, and confusingly it's published by ISO, the International Standards Org Organization, so it's the ISO OSI. Um, and it was developed in uh, the 70s, I think, and um, it was as there was a lot of different networks uh, out there um, and it tried to kind of give some structure and order to what people were doing. The internet uh, grew out of something called the ARPANET, which was a U.S. defense agency network of uh, research, uh, researchers and universities and stuff like that. And it's also known as the TCP IP um, stack or protocol. Anyway, so um, these look a fair bit alike. I would say that um, the presentation layer in the OSI protocol stack, that gives you things like uh, encryption and data compression and stuff like that. And so this maps to the application layer in the internet protocol stack. The session layer um, can provide things like uh, checkpointing, sequencing, and stuff like that. And so it 
uh, is covered by both the application layer and the transport layer in this um, in the internet protocol stack and that's all I'm going to say about the OSI model people still talk about it you might encounter it uh, in a co-op term so I figure that you should be aware that it exists but we're going to focus on the internet uh, protocol stack and so I'll just say the internet protocol stack uh, layers are so I'm going to work from the bottom up. So we've got, I guess I'll number them, uh, the physical layer. So this is the medium over which the uh, communication happens. And this can be things like uh, twisted pair copper wires. Uh, they're twisted to, um, so two pairs of insulated wires are twisted to uh, prevent interference and uh, they operate in the 10 megabit per second to 10 gigabit per second range something like that possibly faster it keeps improving um, other types uh, we've got uh, fiber optics and uh, we also have uh, the radio communication medium and that could be your home Wi-Fi or it could be uh, satellite uh, based. Okay, and then the next layer is the link layer. And this takes the, um, the values, the what's being sent over the physical layer and packages it and um, puts it into something called frames. And two of the common link layer protocols that uh, you'll have heard of are Ethernet. And Ethernet originally used coax cables. Uh, I remember that back from my um, grad study days. But nowadays it usually uses twisted pair cables and switches. And the IEEE um, standard number for that is 802.3 and the other common one uh, Wi-Fi obviously uses uh, radio signals and the IEEE uh, standard for that is 802.11 then we've got the the network layer and that is basically about uh, addressing and moving uh, packets of data from machine to machine. And so the common protocol for that is the IP protocol, the internet protocol. Uh, and we've had uh, IPv4 for a long time, and now we're moving up to IP uh, v6 so that we can have uh, a larger range of uh, network addresses since 32 bits which is what was used for IPv4 only gives you roughly 4 billion at well, gives you about 4 billion addresses um, and we're exceeding that number uh, in what we need the transport protocol I've mentioned one of them already. A common transport protocol is TCP, which is the transmission control protocol, not the transport control protocol. And that's a connection-oriented protocol. We're going to talk about that a fair bit. And the other one is UDP, which is the user datagram protocol. And it does not create a connection between computers. It just fires packets individually. And it's a best effort protocol. So it hopes that the packets gets to the other side and it does have its uses, as we'll discuss. In fact, um, if you look back at the um, fault tolerance notes, I believe that I uh, mentioned UDP when I was talking about the precision time protocol, because that's what it's based on. And then the application layer. So that's going to be any applications that use uh, the internet. So 
the hypertext uh, transport protocol is a common one. The simple mail transfer transfer protocol um, for exchanging email, uh, secure shell, and there are others. So let's just draw a picture of what this uh, looks like. So in networking, the computers that are communicating are called hosts. Uh, leave just a little bit of a margin on the left here. We're going to have host A and over here we're going to have host B. Okay, so at the top here we've got an application running on host A. So let's say that it's a web browser and it wants to communicate with an application on host B such as a web server. And so they exchange messages with each other based if it's a web um, scenario on the HTTP protocol. And so the connection here is from one end to the other and they don't really care about what's in between. Now the application doesn't really talk directly between host A and host B. The application will give its message to the transport layer and this will be bi-directional. So each layer provides a service to the one above it. So the transport layer is going to make sure that this message from host A gets over to host B and it's going to work with the transport layer running on host B. So these are end-to-end -end protocols So let's just add that on the left here. So these are end to end protocols. And then the other three are machine to machine protocols. So the transport layer talks to the network layer that deals with uh, IP addresses and it's a machine-to-machine -machine layer, so you could have other machines, devices, uh, between the hosts. So, for example, routers, switches, uh, and probably a number of them, depending on the scenario, but I'm just going to show one in between. So the network worries about addressing and routing uh, the packet um, of data from machine to machine and the network layer talks to the link layer so it encapsulates uh, packets from the network layer into frames and it might add error uh, correction and um, things like, you know, if it's wireless, it's going to worry about um, sharing the medium with other uh, other link layers. So like a, you know, a shared wireless, uh, like a broadcast medium like wireless. And the link layer relies on the physical layer to actually communicate the bits from the one machine to the other. Okay, and again, there will be connection on these machines between the layers. So these uh, protocol layers are all machine to machine. And what you'll have in between the hosts are things like 
routers, and switches. Okay, that's uh, page one.